you didn't grow up in Silicon Valley. Uh, you grew up on a, on a farm in Berks County, Pennsylvania, right? Yes, the most rural of <laughs> um, What was that like? You know, it was very much uh, this highly, uh, you know, homogeneous Germanic uh, Pennsylvania Dutch farming community. Hard work won you everything. You know, a lazy day was you didn't have to get up to milk, right? <laughs> you know, you could sleep in until breakfast at 6 a.m. as opposed to being in the barn at 4 a.m. You know, hard work. Uh, one time, John, I was with uh, all of my uncles. My dad was uh, one of ten, and uh, you know they're all around at a family reunion. And I look around the table; not one of my uncles has all of their fingers. Mm. Right? It's like you talk about you know hard work. It's like yeah, this is hard work, but it was also this deep values-based environment where a firm handshake, your word was the bond, right? A commitment that you're gonna get up every day, you're gonna work hard, you're not in control of the environment and whether the crops are gonna be good, but you're gonna give your best effort every single day with the highest of integrity. And out of that came a deep work ethic, right? You know, a spiritual belief and environment as well that has carried me well to this day. That just reminds me every day that I'm working for things far greater than my job. Mm. And how does a young man in a Pennsylvania Dutch farming community get interested in technology? Well, my dad was uh, 9 of 10, and he never had his own farm. Hmm. So he, his grandpa said, we have enough farms in the family, just work with your siblings. So that worked great for the first uh, 15, 20 years of my dad's life. But then as the cousins started to grow up, you know, they were taking over the farms. And uh, so it became obvious that I wasn't going to be a farmer. I'm the oldest boy. I would have been the, uh, you know, the son to inherit the farm, but there was no son to, there was no farm to inherit for this son. So I accidentally took a scholarship exam, uh, won the scholarship, and uh, your grandfather had given your father a farm. You, you might have farmed it. Oh, guarantee you, <laughs> absolutely. I'd be a farmer in Pennsylvania. I liked working on farms. I liked working with my dad. The number one son always inherits the farm, mm. right? I'd be a farmer in Pennsylvania today. So, you know, a tech executive or Pennsylvania farmer, right? You know, it's just the, amazing the, the pathway that God has uh, directed my life. Absolutely. And when you say that, I want to uh, ask you more about your values and your faith. You've written a book about putting your work and your faith together. And yet it seems in all the talk about diversity that we have in, in corporate America right now, we, we haven't gotten to a language for talking about deeply held belief. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, particularly in Silicon Valley, I, I feel like, yeah, everybody can be here, but it gets uncomfortable if you really deeply believe something that's not secular. How do you navigate that, particularly as the leader of a big, public technology company who's also openly Christian. Yeah. And you, you know, for us, you know, we, we think about diversity and inclusion. It's been a journey for me. Right? I certainly have a lot to learn. You know, as I say, you know, there was no diversity where I grew up. You know, I joke that the only ethnic foods I had eaten when I started at Intel were spaghetti and uh, pizza. <laughs> right? It's been quite the journey for me uh, personally. But as a Christian leader, you know, my company knows I'm a Christian, but they also know I deeply value diversity. Right? And that means that we want to make it a place that people can be of any race any religious perspective, any sexual orientation, and that I open it up to say, please give me feedback when I'm not being that person. Hmm. And every once in a while, I'm uncomfortable with that, right, with some of the feedback. And as I say, a diversity journey begins when you're ready to be uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. How right? does the uncomfortable feedback come to you? Uh, sometimes from my head of HR gives me that feedback. Some, some people who can speak out every once in a while, uh, you know, in uh, different settings where people will say, well, he was very uncomfortable with that. It was in a meeting with uh, some of our pride, uh, our uh, pod leaders, we call them, power of difference groups, and uh, our uh, pride uh, pod, uh, one of them, uh, he came out that day that he was gay, and he was very uncomfortable doing that with me because of my strong Christian beliefs in that setting. 
And I came back to him and I thanked him so much for his willingness to do that. And then I apologized for having created an environment where he didn't feel comfortable before that uh, meeting. So, and it's constantly, and I've told that story inside of the company and uh, to our leadership uh, team uh, for it, that we have to make it safe for people of different religious environments.